Alright students, the topic for today's class is about allocation methods. Alright, so allocation methods basically means uh, those methods uh, which are used to allocate the space to the files onto the hard disk. Right. So allocation methods refers to how the disk blocks are allocated for files. Operating system allocates the space to the files using the allocation method. Right. So operating system will be doing the job of allocating the space to any new file which has to be stored onto the secondary storage. So it will be using certain allocation methods like contiguous allocation length allocation and then you have a indexed allocation method so these three technologies these three techniques of allocating the space onto the hard disk can be used by operating system to provide a space for files all right and the two points which it has to consider while allocating the space that there should be efficient utilization of disk space so your hard disk should be utilized efficiently and secondly the access of files should be faster it should be easy to retrieve the files from the data blocks on the hard disk the three methods we have is first is contiguous allocation so contiguous allocation is also uh, referred to as pre-allocation strategy so when we were discussing about the memory management techniques we studied about the contiguous allocation where we require a contiguous single block right so in this approach also for a file you will need a single contiguous or a continuous set of blocks allocated to a file at the time of file creation the file allocation table will contain entry for each file showing the starting block and the length of the file so contiguous block allocation means that you need to have continuous set of blocks for any file to be stored thus you cannot store the file on scattered locations so if suppose this is the hard disk and these are the data blocks okay where the files will be taking the space and this is your file allocation table fact which has three entries file the starting block and the length of the file that means how many blocks it will require so if suppose there is a file a so the starting block of this file a is one and the length of the file a is three that means it requires three contiguous blocks one two three so all these three blocks are occupied by file a then there is a file b a starting block of file b is five and it requires two blocks the length is two so five and six this is for file b there is a file c entry in the file allocation table it starts at eight that means the block which starts is the block number is eight and it needs two as the length of the file c is two blocks so it will be taking two disk blocks eight and nine and these blocks need to be continuous if a file requires three blocks it needs to be continuous it is not possible that you can have one block on this location and another block on this location because it is contiguous allocation got the idea now we have advantages and disadvantages of contiguous allocation the advantage is that it is simple to implement all right it is simple to implement you just need to provide the continuous allocation space sequentially and it is best suited for sequential files because in sequential file access you have record by record one after the other access so here you have continuous blocks so you can easily access the files in a sequential manner the disadvantage is that it is not always possible to find the contiguous blocks if you have another file file d which requires three blocks then you can easily give the three blocks but there are no three blocks available contiguously there are two blocks here one block here one block here but it is a contiguous allocation so you need three blocks together which is not possible right so it is not always easy to get the contiguous blocks and secondly this approach is suffering from external fragmentation i have just shown that you are having these disk blocks available to be allocated but the operating system cannot allocate these blocks to the file requiring three blocks in a continuous fashion all right so this is external fragmentation next we will be discussing about the linked allocation 
द लिंक एलोकेशन इज अ नॉन कंटीजियस एलोकेशन दैट मीन्स यू आर नॉट लुकिंग फॉर अ कंटिन्यूस ब्लॉक सेट्स अवेलेबल राइट इट इज यूजिंग अ लिस्ट and it has a linked list type of approach that means it the blocks will be pointing to the next block all right so it is based on linked list approach each block contains a pointer to the next block in the chain first block points to the second block and second block points to the address of the third block third block contains the address of the fourth block and so on this approach is based on individual block bases because every block is containing the address of the next block the file allocation table has a single entry for each file showing the starting block where the file block starts and the end block number right so if this is the diagram of your hard disk according to linked allocation then there are again uh, you have uh, 16 blocks available addressed from 0 to 15 and there is a file allocation table which has three entries file a this is the name of the file the starting block once it start to read and then the end block where the file ends so this file starts with a starts with one sorry so a file starts with one as the first address of the block so one contains the address of the next block which is 4 4 points to 5 next address is of 10 10 points to 13 13 points to 14 that's why the starting block of the file a is 1 address is 1 and the end is 14 so this is the linked allocation every data block is linked to another block that means through pointer it contains the address of the next block advantage is no external fragmentation because here one block is containing the address of the next block so you can use the non contagious approach over here so external fragmentation will not occur it is best suitable for sequential files in which the records are accessed one after the other the disadvantage over here is that we are using pointers so the pointers will also require some memory within each block so that will take space and secondly it takes much accessing time as blocks are linked to each other the access time is more because every block is linked to every other block thus if you have 100 blocks then you will be accessing every block if you want to access 99th block there is no way that you can reach the 99th block directly you will start from the beginning of the file and then from one pointer to next pointer then next pointer then you will reach the 99th block so the disadvantage is that only that we are using the pointers over here which needs a memory space again in the block secondly the access time is high so we have some improvement over it that we have indexed allocation in this approach a single index block contains the address for the blocks to allocate to any allocated file so in this we had every block containing the address of the next block but in case of indexed allocation what we do is suppose this is the hard disk diagram and there are total of 9 blocks 0 to 8 so this one is labeled as the index block okay in the file allocation table there are two entries only one is for the file name file a and there is an index block it is one so this one block contains the pointer to all the blocks used by file a all right so here we are not connecting one block to the next block next block to the third block address third to the fourth block address but what we have done is that we have taken the first block as the index which contain all the other blocks entry so this is your file a index block is 1 and this index block is being shown over here that one is connected to 0 one is also having a link to 3 1 to 4 1 to 5 1 to 6 so each file has its own index block every file will have its own index block file allocation table containing the address of the index block advantages is that it supports sequential as well as direct access so sequential access is also possible which was also possible in our earlier two cases but it supports direct access also if you want to go for the block number 6 then from 1 there is a direct link to 6 so you can access that block directly there is no external fragmentation because we do not need the continuous set of blocks when file size increases we can easily add the new blocks to the 
index block and this is also possible that if you want to add the new blocks suppose you uh, add some information to the file you add the content to the file then the new block will have to be added onto the disk as well so that new block can be added easily by updating the index block so you will add if you're taking seventh and eighth block also now in the file a then you will just provide a link over here in the index block table so one has a link to seven and one has a link to eight so adding our new blocks is also easy in the next video we will be discussing about free space management thank you